Hello and welcome to The Gun Shop. We are here today to show you how we clean shotguns. Everyone has their own special way, uh, but this is the way that we would sort of preach to clean a shotgun. Uh, today we're going to be doing an over and under 20 ball Beretta Silver Pigeon. Let's have a little look at what gear we've got in front of us. So what we have here, uh, this is a two piece cleaning rod. It's got a handle end, a joining end, and as you can see here, there's a little notch bit that denotes which end is which, so you don't sort of screw it together wrong because the threads are different. Uh, three pieces are available, a little bit more compact, but two pieces are just as common. Doesn't really matter what you use uh, as long as it's a cleaning rod, as long as it fits down the bore. Uh, next we have this, this is a plastic jag. Uh, the plastic jag is used to hold patches or rag, or a bit of blue roll or something like that, just goes in, sort of just for, used for holding that. This is called a phosphor bronze brush. Uh, this is used for scrubbing your gun. This is called a wool mop. This is for polishing the barrel. We have three types of solvents here. Uh, firstly, we have this. This is Express Gun Oil, just a, a light lubricant. Um, it's got special rust inhibitor, apparently, but uh, I would say that's just a, a fairly key characteristic of most oil. Um, very good general purpose oil, so we use a lot of it. Next, we have Young's 303. Uh, this is a cleaner and rust remover, uh, and it's a nitro powder solvent. So this is what we use down the barrels for, for most things, really. It's, it's quite uh, it's quite aggressive. It's not that aggressive, though. It's pretty good cleaner. Uh, don't put it on the outside of your gun, because when it, can, it sort of dries out, it goes a sort of nasty, thick, uh, yellowish staining everywhere. It's rather vile, um, and not particularly good for your gun. It gets a bit gunky. So that's for your barrels only. Next we have this, famed Parker Hale 009. Uh, this cleans and protects your shotgun and rifle barrels. Um, it cleans lead and metal copper fouling, essentially it's a, a lead and copper solvent. Uh, very, very aggressive. It smells like um, pear drops, it's quite nice actually. Uh, however, no, it doesn't, it doesn't smell nice. Do not inhale it, it's a solvent and it will rot your brain. However, uh, probably the more than the most aggressive cleaners going, uh, I remember one guy saying that he, um, put a bit on his tongue and it met with the inside of his cheeks. Um, not entirely sure whether that's true, however, be very careful with 009, get it in your eyes or anywhere, always wear gloves when using it, and so on and so forth. Probably won't use it now, however, I do use it on particularly dirty guns. Uh, finally, this. Uh, this is a piece of rag. Uh, use a lot of this whilst cleaning guns. Uh, usually upstairs I use reusable rag, but this is just blue roll for the sake of uh, today, so we'll show you what's going on. Uh, patch is also good, patches do a lot better job, and it's a lot more absorbent, however this is what we're going to show you with today, because most people have got lots of this lying around at home, whether it be blue roll, kitchen roll, toilet roll, whatever. Alright, let's clean the gun. So first things first, uh, clean your workspace. This is most like the kitchen table, for those of you who don't have a uh, half decent garage or somewhere to do it, there is nothing we'll do on the kitchen table, it's usually warm and uh, winds up the wife, which is usually a a good thing to do. Uh, first things first, line the table, whether this is with newspaper or something else, these oils can sort of ruin wooden tables quite well. Generally speaking, you end up in a much happier household if you put something underneath it. Plus if you've got a bit of swarf or a bit of grit or something, it's not going to get on your gun, it's a nice clean work surface. Uh, proper cleaning mats are available, but disposable paper, we live in a disposable world, might as well use as much paper as possible. Next, take the gun apart. So, we're going to start with the barrels. Uh, if you know how, take your ejectors out. We'll probably do a little video on this. Uh, this will mean that you're not going to be getting lots and lots of oil and fouling behind your ejectors when you scrub your barrels out. Uh, that's probably one of the key, key reasons that guns come off face, get loose, is because of muck and stuff stuck behind the ejectors that just ever so slightly just keep pulling it away from the face every time you slam it shut. So, remove your ejectors, your ejector springs in a Beretta or just your ejectors in a Browning, if you can, if you can be bothered. Um, for most, most people don't bother, worry about it, but you know, it's worthwhile. Next, in this particular gun, like I say, I'm not going to use any 009 because it's not that dirty. Get your youngs to the 303 and give a nice generous squirt down each barrel. Next, put your rods together. Probably should have done that already, but we're in no particular rush. Like that, and take this, your phosphor bronze brush, screw it into the end. Give it a 
put it in and work it down your barrel nice and slowly, turning as you go towards the end. And same in the other barrel. Just until it pokes out of there, and bring it back through. Turning as you go again. The whole point of this particular exercise is not to clean your barrels. Um, that will give it a preliminary scrub, but it's to spread this young 303 around. Consider it like um, this. If you take your gun straight off of the stand, nice and hot, and give it a clean, it will clean very, very easily. It's very much like you eat your dinner and you wash the plate off, cleans like that. However, if you leave it for a couple of days, um, like a lot of us unfortunately do, it gets quite hard and pretty difficult to clean. However, if you chuck it in soapy water for 20 minutes, five minutes, even a minute, it helps an awful lot, just soaks in. So we do that and we stick it to one side. I'll move on to this, the forend. Uh, forends, generally speaking, don't need a lot of cleaning. Um, get yourself a little bit of rag, like this. Spray it with some standard light lubricating gun oil and just wipe down the metalwork, trying to keep the oily part of the rag off of the woodwork if we can. And that is your forend. Again, if you've got a lot of mess around the back, clean around there, around your ejector kickers, your cock and dogs, that sort of thing. So just to make sure that there's no debris or fouling in there. Uh, whilst the gun is serviced, that will take this out and actually go into the, the inner depths. But generally speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, just make sure it's not dirty and it's got a, bit, a light film of rust protection. And that is your forehand done. Next comes to this, the action. Uh, most things like a Beretta have a fairly closed action. There's not a lot of places muck can hide. I would recommend not spraying oil into the action because it can get that back here through these holes where the firing pins are. And sit back into your action, get into the woodwork and sort of do more harm than good. So again, just use your oily cloth just to give it a good clean out like that, make sure there's no mess on there. Um, with both of these, on wooden guns at least, there's not that many over and unders that are made of synthetic anyway. Worth looking after your wood. So, get your walnut oil or conditioning oil or some sort of natural oil, keeping the mineral oil away from the wood, just a little bit on your thumb and work it in. Rub it into the wood, you see it sort of come alive for a brief moment or two. Keep rubbing. A lot of these sort of mixtures have a lot of beeswax, high beeswax content, so the hotter they are, the better they'll get into the wood. Just keep rubbing it in. Same on the other side. Again, this is a fairly mint gun, so the wood's still got a lot of factory finish left on it. Older guns and drier guns, especially if you take them out in the rain, will accept a lot more oil. Um, thing to do with this is just to leave it again for a few minutes. Do your fore end. You need a lot less for that, so just again, just a tiny bit on your thumb. Try and keep it out of the checkering because it will, I say, work with the beeswax, fill your checkering up when it gets hard. A little bit like that, and leave it for a few minutes. So, coming back to it, um, it's been a few minutes now. If you touch the wood, it should be a bit tacky. That oil will start to sort of, what has soaked in will have soaked in, what's on top will start to dry. So you just get a rag and just remove the excess off the top. So if you leave it to dry, that will go hard and you'll leave fingerprints and smear marks all over it as well. So you really, it goes quite a long way, a little bit of uh, wood oil, generally speaking, once you've had a, well, if the stock's got a finish. So as you'll see, there's a load of removed oil and dirt there. It's always quite interesting to see. You do the stock in the fork too. That's that. So that's your woodwork done. Uh, put that to one side. Should be all right. And let's go back to your barrels, which have been sitting in that soapy water, Youngs 303, so it should make it really easy for us to clean them.
Bearing in mind uh, that most of your dirt is really from your chamber and in that first, first sort of six or seven inches of barrel, that's where you need to focus most of your efforts. So I always start with a sort of a couple of full passes of the rod. In each barrel. Just disturb what's been sat there in that oil. And then measuring from your, the back of your chamber to sort of I say about sort of eight or nine inches up the barrel, put it there, so the back of your brush is there, put your hand there, so you've got a nice measurement, and put it in. Focusing quite seriously in that area after the forcing goes and just up the barrel. Um, everyone does say, oh, don't you worry about wearing your barrels out. You're not going to wear out steel that takes steel shot at 1500 feet per second with a little bit of phosphor bronze that you're moving up and down the barrel at about a foot a second or something, it's not, not going to kill it. In each barrel like that. So, then that's new, just another squirt. Just to lubricate it and then a couple of long passes again. At this point always just have a little look up to the light, it's going to look like a right mess in there but you will be able to see if there's still a lot of sort of lead fouling or plastic fouling up the barrels, which is that sort of crusty, um, crustacean-y looking thing, I suppose, around the end of your just after the forcing coats, that sort of thick dirt build up. Luckily, this doesn't have it, so again, I'll just give it another couple of passes with this, just to make sure we're clean. Another little scrub around there. It's all just OCD, I suppose, but um, I used to do this quite often. And that is you done with your phosphor bronze brush. The next step is to take that off, move fairly swiftly, put your jag on. Unfortunately, I don't really like plastic jags, mostly for the reason that they, I think they've got a cast thread. So they'll sit nicely into the thread of the rod. That's why brass ones are better. I think that's probably the only reason that they are. Not entirely straight, but it'll do the job. Pick up your oily cloth, tear off a bit, or this is where you should probably use a couple of shotgun patches. Thread it into your jag like that, then work it down your barrel. Twisting as you go, and that should soak up all of that miserable dirty oil. So what you have here is perfectly clean barrels with mucky solvent on top. So it's just, let's start just giving it a quick rinse. Here you go. Pull it out. Have a little look at that. That's all that dirty oil in there. And these barrels were fairly clean to start with. So we've seen all sorts of things. People use an awful lot of this and you can have your barrels absolutely dripping it. When they're really dirty, that doesn't do it too much damage. But again, you've got to, got to bear in mind that these solvents aren't particularly cheap, especially the good quality ones, so you don't want to, don't want to waste them, not really. Just take a little bit of that, and do the other barrel. This is where I always go wrong and end up doing it to the same barrel, so probably worth having to have a quick check. And that is clean barrels. Now, unfortunately, at this point, they're now very dry. So we um, take this jag off and put on the ball mop. Uh, the whole point of the warm-up isn't to do the job that we've just done with this. You see a lot of people have their warm-ups and they are black, absolutely black. Uh, the whole point of this is just to take your warm-up, load it up with oil. It doesn't really matter with warm barrels where they're so hot they've got the, the chrome lining so they don't really rust or rot. However, it is good practice just to chuck a little bit of this and oily mop down there. Oily 
just to sort of lubricate those barrels. And as you can see, there's barely any dirt on there at all. And now you have perfectly clean insides of your barrels. You can take your rod and take that apart. Moving out back now too is um, get yourself another a piece of rag or your cloth. Get some express oil and just give your barrels a little squirt on the outside. Get your rag and just run it up the outside there. Try and focus on getting it in the sort of the cracks in the ribs if you like, because that's where a lot of the dirt will stay, especially the bad stuff. Most of the stuff on the outside of the barrels will do quite, you know, you'll wipe off quite easily. Even just through use, you can remove a lot of the dirt that's there. The same around the back of the face there as well. And that's that. Now, now to put your ejectors back in, I always like to use a little bit of grease with my ejectors. It's probably should have said this was in the selection to start with. This is Bisley Gun Grease. There's a thousand different types of grease out there to use. Again, a pot like this will last you a large portion of your career shooting. So um, don't be uh, too uh, liberal with it. Be quite stingy. It will last. I say that too much grease isn't particularly good for a gun but no grease is also pretty bad. So you just want a tiny little film over all these moving parts here. Ejector there. Perfect, so that's that, all back together in that sense. Uh, now it's the, the part where we're going to put the gun back together, and this is where the grease really comes into its own. Places I like to put, well, I have to say I have to put grease, um, again we're using tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, rub between your fingers, and just put a light film over the faces here, a little bit in the D's, the hook onto your trunnions. Also, always put a little bit onto the fore end loop, and a lot of people only put it on the front here, but also put it on the back because this is especially on sort of oil runners, this is where the gun tensions off of. So, you do want that to be well lubricated. And get your action. What you want to put is just around the front here, again, not too much. Always, a lot of people, including myself, are guilty of just being too liberal with oils and solvents, and it's entirely pointless. So just a little bit along the face there. And that's any wearing or load bearing sort of surface I suppose needs to have it. So put that across. We need to go back together. Oh, it goes back on. Open and close it a couple of times. You might end up with a little excess grease around any of these edges. But say the torches are so tight. A little bit of rag. Wipe those off because you don't want that hanging around particularly. Ready to go in the cabinet until next time we go shooting. As simple as that. Any questions? Ask below. Um, and I say there's a there's plenty of different solvents and lots of different things that people use, but this is how we clean guns, and I hope that was helpful.